we saw the HSBC Premier Personal Economy Summit Season 2 enter its second leg, which was held in New Delhi. A motivational talk by Amitabh Khan and a candid conversation with that guru Pralat Kakkar enthralled the audience. Uh, the most critical thing is that you need to have uh, the vision, the dream, the passion, the energy uh, to be convinced about what you're doing. I joined advertising totally by accident, like a lot of things in my life. But the most important thing was, I took to it like a duck to water. Welcome to the HSBC Premier Personal Economy Summit, your wealth and beyond in partnership with ET Now. In the next session, we articulate on how love what you do and do what you love drives a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose and a true sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. S. Ramakrishnan, the head retail banking and wealth management of HSBC India, set the context for this theme. The session, as you see here, is about love what you do and do what you love. So if someone asked me, is banking your passion? At no point in time in my career did I dream about becoming a banker and watching other people's money grow. That was not my plan. So it's not my passion. It's my job, it's my career, and I do it with a lot of passion. Living your passion does not necessarily mean leaving your job and doing something else, doing your passion. You can live your passion through various, various ways. For example, music is my passion. I cannot become a Shankar Mahadevan. But if I, if I'm, let's say I love, say, Hindustani classical music, and I listen to Hindustani classical music one hour every day, that is living my passion. So you can actually live multiple roles. You can have a career, and you can live your passion. I started a piano class at the ripe old age of 42. I went to a piano class. I started learning. I did grade one of the, um, the, the exam for the, for, for, the, for the piano. The average age in the examination hall was six. I was 42. And, and the average age was six because I was 42. If you exclude me, it is probably five. So I did it. You, have to give, you can give it a shot. All of you can give it a shot. But the fact is, I left after grade four. Why did I leave? Why do people leave? They leave because they just didn't find the time for it, like someone said. They leave because they didn't have someone pushing them. They didn't have a coach. They didn't have an expert pushing them. They probably didn't have the money or the time. And maybe they just didn't have a plan around it. If you have a plan, you know the plan can fail. It might fail. But if you don't have a plan, you will fail. And that brings me to the first takeaway of my session, that most people do not plan to fail, but they fail to plan. Therefore, if you need to choose to live your passion, think about having a robust financial plan. That gives me to my second takeaway. It's never too late to pursue your passion. Some people start at 10, some people start at 40, some people start at 70. And it's never too early to start planning for it. And finally, review your goals regularly because only then would you regularly achieve your goals. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now, our next speaker's love for passion and passion for music has catapulted him into one of India's leading playback singers and award-winning composers in the country. His sensational compositions for popular Bollywood movies such as Tare Zami Par, Dil Chahta Hai, and Bhag Mil Ka Bhag have left many uh, music lovers breathless. Please welcome the very talented Shankar Mahadevan. How huh? did the computer engineer Shankar Mahadevan become and find his passion for music? Just like any normal middle class family, you, uh, whatever passion you have, whatever uh, talent you have, that is always treated as a hobby to begin with, you know. And your focus is on education, which is great, uh, which we still do in our house. So you do well in your 10th standard, you do well in your 12th standard, then you get into the only choice that we had was whether you want to do uh, medicine or you want to do engineering. All my friends were going into engineering, you went into engineering, and it was uh, computer science engineering. So 
yeah, I mean, wow, campus interviews, this, that, and all, and you get your job, and, and you're there, already working, before you know it. But along, the, along with that, there is something that is brewing parallelly, which, is, uh, which was music in my case, you know. Right from my very, uh, I mean, very young, when I was really young, I was involved in music, and I used to sing, perform. I did my first recording for an album with, uh, you know, Rata Mangeshkar and Bhimsen Joshi when I was 11 years old. I played Veena so in that. Did your parents inculcate music in very training? Much, because yeah. considering you're from a South Indian family, I'm guessing it's part of growing up. Yeah. Yeah, and also they, they, they were the people who uh, kind of uh, spotted the talent, you know. So it's opposite in your case, Shankar. Typically, yeah. you have to convince your parents. You gave no, to, no, to peer yeah. pressure and went in for computer engineering. I'm very lucky to have wonderful parents. And I was too young. I bought a harmonium. I started just playing it, you know. Then I started learning singing. I played. I started learning veena. So, you know, anything that I wanted, uh, they used to passionately uh, educate me take me to the correct guru, take me to the correct classes. So they kind of observed the fact that I can musically uh, develop myself. And that was the greatest thing that happened to me. Side by side, every alternate day, I was performing somewhere, doing small recordings here and there. I was very involved in the advertising industry. I used to sing a lot in the advertising industry. Many of the ads I sang, which became even popular. And then came a time when I had to, you know, kind of, think back and it was moving really fast and my passports were taken you know uh, by by the company i was because i was working on oracle and oracle was it was hot you know you just work and in 6 months you're there in the us all my engineering colleagues are in the us i would have also been there that was a time when i had to take a call key do i want to go there and do i want to live in that one of those Typical American, you know, villas over there, have a couple of cars over there and earn thousands of dollars. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to do something which really is something that is brewing inside me for a long time and I want to take the plunge? So I took the plunge. So, I mean, you know, you, it's interesting that you've taken your passion beyond just singing. Your son is now into the music industry. You also have academies of your own. How important is it to spread the passion? See, uh, my, my passion overall is music. And music is a very big head, you know. And it's got a lot of derivatives, uh, especially for me, because I'm involved uh, in music per se, but I've got interest within music. There are many branches. For example, I'm known for my, whatever, Bollywood com compositions and singing. But Bollywood compositions and, and singing is just one path of my musical journey. For example, it is Bollywood, then I do classical music. There are, uh, if you go to Chennai or places like that, people know me only for my classical classical music singing. And uh, I do a lot of world fusion music with people like Ustad Zakir Hussain and John McLaughlin. Then I, I do a lot of uh, compositions and I have my own, uh, uh, you know, shows which I do, live performances. So... They're all different derivatives of music, which I really, really enjoy doing. So since our theme is passion for life, if you had to sing a song on passion, what would that be? We have a song in a film uh, which says that, you know, you have a goal out there and you have your passion Laksh. and you have to reach. Yeah, right? You got it. Roke tujko aandhiya ya zameen aur asma paega jo laksh hai tera laksh ko har haal mein paana hai And Ramki, I'm going to get you in on board as well for the audience interaction. Indian parents only wish to inculcate in their children that if you're good at something, do it after engineering. Do you think that is it too late after engineering? I've been playing guitar for the past eight years. So okay, okay. that is a passion of mine, of course. It all depends on how strong your passion is and how strong you want to, you just, you, you have to take a decision and you say that I want to become a guitarist. Okay, now the decision is taken. Then after that, what? I mean, it's not enough if you are, uh, if you are half-hearted about your art form. See, because then you left your engineering also there. That's also the gone, and then you're you're not even achieving anything uh, by playing your guitar. Your guitar, you should play in such a way that I hear 30 seconds of your playing, and you should blow my mind. What are the elements of passion? How do you define passion? 
passion to me has got to be a stress buster. Sometimes the career is your passion because you love going to work and doing that and, and doing whatever else you do. So for me, I think that's the starting point. And the second thing is, uh, you will do it no matter what. Meaning, no matter whether um, you get paid for it or not, I will still do it because that's what it's, it's so important to me. Yeah, I have a right. question for Shankar. There is a song of his that made me speechless. Breathless. And that's breathless. <laughs> so if, if I have your permission, can I please ask him to render Absolutely. that one song for all of us? <laughs> कोई जो मिला तो मुझे ऐसा लगता था जैसे मेरी सारी दुनिया में की की रुद और रंगों की बरगा है खुशबू की आंधी है महंगी हुई सी अब सारी फिजाएं कहेगी हुई सी अब सारी हवाएं कोई हुई सी अब सारी दिशाएं बदली हुई सी अब सारी अदाएं जागी उमंगे धड़क रहा है दिल सांसों में तूफान होठो पे नगमे आंखों में सपने सपनों में बीते हुए सारे वो लम्हे जब कोई आया था नजरों पे छाया था दिल में समाया कैसे मैं बताऊं तुम्हें कैसे उसे पाया था प्यार से चेहरे पे बिखरी जजूर फिर तो ऐसा लगता था जैसे कोहरे के बीच एक ओस में धुला हुआ फूल किला है जैसे बादल में एक चांद छुपा और झांक रहा है जैसे रात के पर्दे में एक सवेरा है रोशन रोशन आंखों में सपनों का सागर जिसमें प्रेम सितारों की चादर जैसे झलक रही है लहरों लहरों बात करे तो जैसे मोती पर It's time now for a short break, but when we return, watch Indian tennis legend Vijay Amrit Raj talk about his journey in the competitive world of tennis. It is a passion that drives them to be able to hold on to that. And clearly, I don't think passion truly retires at any point in life. It just changes as you go along. Welcome back to the HSBC Premier Personal Economy Summit, Your Wealth and Beyond Season 2 in partnership with ED Now. Our next session reiterates the fact that passion is boundless and never retires. Indian tennis legend and a popular sports commentator post his retirement, Vijay Amrit Raj, set the context for this theme. Good evening everyone. I'm going to take you a little back in history because when we talk about passion and retiring and all of that, I think we need to lead into it and what it actually means. I grew up in the southern city of Chennai, as most of you might know, many, many years ago when uh, India was a different place and uh, so was the world. And it has changed a lot, obviously, since the years that have gone by. But I think when we look back at the ride, it has been so spectacular for me and it has clearly been my greatest education I couldn't have asked for anything more. If someone had told me over the years that this was going to be your life, it would have been a complete dream. I grew up in the city of Chennai. I was not very healthy as a child growing up. My mother played the most important role in my life. My parents were constantly at my side. I spent a lot of time in and out of hospital growing up, and my mother actually, on several occasions, used to go sit in school and take notes and come and teach me in the hospital and then begged the teachers to allow me to do the exam, which often I never passed. And uh, eventually, the doctors advised me to play an outdoor sport to be able to get over my health so I could actually go to school and uh, behave normally like other children. And that's the way I actually got into tennis, simply because it was very, very important to my health. Now, once I got into the sport, thanks to my parents, and especially my mom, who used to actually take me to tennis every day. I would play for one minute and sit for five minutes, play for two minutes and sit for 10, eventually running five, 10, 50 yards, and eventually running five, eight, 10 miles every morning, and to be able to get my health back. And eventually started playing tournaments, which to me became a complete obsession. Passion is one thing, obsession is quite another. And I think when we look at it in a form of sport, which on most cases is based entirely on merit, and who's better, who's, who can jump higher, who can run faster, 
who has greater endurance, and so on and so forth. The greatest thing sport has taught me is it has taught me about myself. It has taught me about my character. It has taught me who I am, what I can be, and what am I supposed to be. I remember when we were growing up and playing tournaments in different parts of India and in different parts of the world, my late grandmother used to say to me, why do you have to go so far to lose? But often people used to also say to us as we became professionals, Yes, you play tennis, what do you do for a living? And that was a question that was hard to explain in the days that I grew up. Well, of course, when I won my first tournament, that question went away, but I could never answer my late grandmother's question. But I think when we look back at sport and what it does to an individual, it creates in you a desire that, in my opinion, is unmatched. For us, the ability to have that passion which we grew up with, when there was no money in the game, or at least what it is today, passion drives you to be the best you can be. It drives you to a point where you will not take no for an answer, you will not take a loss. If you lose to one person once, you cannot lose to him a second time. What it takes and what it drives you to be better than that person, to be able to create that victory. So I started traveling at a very young age. Of course, I ended up traveling the world, going to countries I never thought I would go to, meeting people I never thought I would meet. The passion in me was to be able to get the best out of each day. To be able to not lose a day and wake up or go to sleep at night saying, oh, what did I do today? It includes, of course, the ability to relax. It includes the ability to train the mind relax the body. The physical aspect of relaxation is just as important as the mental aspect of relaxation and work. But the ideal thing for body and soul and mind is the ability to do things that you really love to do. And as it turned out, I was doing something that I truly, truly love to do. Let me leave you with just saying that, to a great extent, each and every one of you, as successful as you are, it's important to be able to maintain that passion and drive to be able to give yourselves a, a consistent chance to be better than the day before. Most important of all, let's continue to work hard together, our generation and the next generation, so that as we leave this, leave this wonderful, wonderful place we call Earth, that we actually leave the Earth in good hands for the generations to come. Thanks very much. Okay, I'm sure there's some audience questions as well from you. One that, uh, what is your, now your greatest passion? Number two, how do you sustain it? And number three, what has been the greatest, what has given you greatest joy? Passion, I think in my opinion, has always been something that uh, um, really kind of deals with your own inner self. It's got very little to do with everyone else. It's got very little to do with uh, what you do, but it's more a question of what it does to you internally. And I think to a great extent for me, tennis became my passion. It wasn't my initial passion, it became my passion. And to a great extent, because I was driven to play tennis at an early age because of health, and it eventually became my passion, also the element of success made a huge difference to be able to drive that passion. Now how do I maintain that passion? I think that's, that's a much tougher question than actually having that passion. I think especially when you start to excel in something. And I think to be able to maintain that passion, it might change as you go along. And the challenges might start to make a little difference of my doing my first movie, or doing the second picture, or doing a television series in front of a live audience. Those kinds of things, I think, are able to kind of renew and maintain your passion internally in life. What is my greatest success? Your third question. My greatest success for me has always been that my sons call me every day. And I would now like to invite on stage the CIO of HSBC Asset Management Company, Tushar Pradhan, to share with us his perspective on how passion is boundless and ceases to retire. Uh, what I'm going to talk about really is uh, something very close to my heart, and it is not about the markets. It is about a concept, and it is about passion. Many times people look at investments 
and people look at money matters in a very mundane fashion. But let me tell you that money making can be a passion. And I'm sure that we all can share that passion if you really understand how money is made. Many times people mistake money made by way of calling it an interest or I would call a return. No matter what you do, passion need not retire at all. So what is my first passion? Investing, surprise. It is something which is very close to my heart, not, as, not only as the profession that I follow, but I'm sure the day I retire, that passion is never going to retire till probably the last day of my life on this earth. And that is something which I wish all of us can probably generate in ourselves, that whatever you do becomes a passion with you, and that you continue doing that till the very last day of your life here. Albert Einstein, of all people, has come up with a statement which says that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Now, many people want to put some money away and expect some return on it. Many times they ask, Acha, but what is the return? The point is, if you talk about compound interest, you don't really have to have too much money to begin with. If you wait long enough, the major part of your return really comes not only from the investing that you do initially, but the return on the return that you get. Many times when I ask people in India what is a good rate of return, they say it's 15%. Now let's take 15%. If I compound any amount of investing at 15% return, what is that amount likely to be in five years' time? Pop quiz. It's going to be twice that amount. So it's going to double your money in five years if you can compound it at 15%. What will it be in 10 years' time? It'll be four times the amount. What will it be in 15 years' time? It is going to be eight times that amount. And what is it going to be in 33 years? It's going to be 100 times. Now you tell me, if I get 100 and I started with one, where has most of my return come from? It has come from the compounding. It has come from the interest on the interest on the interest that has generated most of my investment return. And that is something I call passion. That if you understand this concept, you will get so excited about doing it that the passion becomes natural. Many times I ask, I'm asked this question, when is the right time to invest? Should I put my money now? And I always keep telling people that, look, it doesn't matter which day you come in the market. You have to be meditative. Once you sit, you have to meditate for a long time, and the money will be made. Time in the market is more important than timing the market. And how long a time? That's for you to decide. So I think let's not kid ourselves in terms of how much time we have. We have a lot of time. And how we use it is really what we dedicate to ourselves to make our lives passionate. And as, as a result, I would tend to agree with everyone here and our theme here that passion really never retires. Thank you all very much. We come to the end of the coverage of the HSBC Premier Personal Economy Summit Your Worth and Beyond Season 2 held in New Delhi. We hope you enjoyed watching our coverage. Goodbye and thanks for watching.